Okay, welcome everybody. I wanna start off with a couple questions for you guys. So uh, we're about to enter a new decade. What's the new decade we're entering? Easiest question. The 20s, the 2020s, right? So I wanna look back, Roy looked back a little bit, but I wanna look back a little bit to the 1920s. Um, what, do you, what do we know about that, that particular time? It was roaring. It was the roaring 20s. Very hard to say that. Um, it was an age of exuberance. It was the beginning of the jazz age. Um, there was a lot of innovation happening in the 20s. Uh, the, Ch Charles Lindbergh flew uh, the first transatlantic flight. Penicillin was, in, was discovered. I was about to say invented, but it was discovered. What else? Uh, the, uh, there were 10 Model T cars coming off the lot for Henry Ford. Um, many, many inventions in this period of time. The rise of the independent woman, actually. It was the time in the U.S. where women had the right to vote. So lots of change socially and technically that happened during the 20s. And so as we go through this part of the discussion and as we think about how our solution sets and this industry is evolving, I'd like to offer to you that we're about to enter the next stage of exuberance, uh, the new 2020s. And I think we are contributing to that change and the technologies that we in this industry are bringing to bear are actually going to transform um, the world world in a way that delivers progress that we haven't seen before. And this is what the foundation of the fourth industrial revolution is. And we're at the heart of it. So you've seen these. These are the key themes for these sessions over the next few days. And they have something in common. And I think Roy alluded to this in his comments. It's that we've, I think we've moved beyond SDN and NFV as a talking track of new technologies. Should we adopt them or not? The answer is yes, we've done it. It's implemented. We're moving on. And we're moving on because now we're bringing together all these themes around digital transformation, orchestration, et cetera, uh, to deliver to customers and to end users a true application experience that enables them to have business transformation. And that business transformation ultimately delivers business outcomes. So our conversations now are changing from you know, do we do software-defined networks, do we virtualize functions on top of those, to what's the point? And the point of all this is to get to the application at the end and to deliver superior experiences at the end. And that's what I think the common bind and common theme for all of these, these sessions. So as we think about this, you know, we've seen tremendous change. So back to those, you know, 1920s. Our 2020s are driving change around big data and big data is getting bigger. We, we see uh, IoT at the core of, of that, that transformation. Many devices, many connected users, cloud and new definitions of cloud. So it's no longer a discussion about are we moving to cloud. Yes, but the nature of the cloud is changing. Where the cloud is located is changing. Mobile is the majority, meaning all the devices and most of the connections in the future will be mobile. So why not start with a mobile-first architecture? And in order to do that, you have to have, in our opinion, a software-defined network at the core and network function virtualization on top of that. All of these things together, all of these tr headwinds or trends in the industry really set us up for a discussion around uh, true end-to-end -end application enablement, but the fact that we need new types of networks to manage these trends and deliver new services on top. So we need intelligent networks that deliver to customers seamless mobility. And so we need a new kind of ecosystem. If you look at the right of this slide, you know, th this ecosystem, and I know it's very hard to read from there, uh, shows that there will be many types of service providers in, in the mix, uh, many types of application development partners, um, cloud providers, and many, like I mentioned before, many types of clouds. But these new ecosystems um, are critical, and, and it will take an ecosystem. I don't believe any one company or firm can do 
all of the things in here, and it's not necessary that they do anyway. Uh, but to do that, they really have to, we have to deliver, in, in our opinion, uh, four, on four critical areas in order to deliver that end-to-end -end application experience. Uh, and that the questions of that are around connectivity. So how do you connect your users on a global basis, wherever they may be? How do you do that in a safe and secure manner and start with security instead of add security later as an afterthought. How do we actually do that uh, with end-to-end -end visibility of the application? Uh, and, and in order to have that end, vi end visibility, you have to have all the tool sets needed to do that. You need to have the right dashboards, the right analytics, uh, because visibility without insight means nothing. So our, uh, the new ecosystem is going to require and provides to us, and many of you here actually provide tool sets to provide that necessary insight. And then finally, the next, the, the next layer is around automation. Uh, automation so that you can orchestrate functions in end-to-end -end service chains and deliver seamless experiences to customer. And those, those experiences are necessary in order to deliver the services faster. And this is a necessary component to set up the agile enterprise for, for business customers in particular. And most of my talk here is around business customers. I run the product team uh, for Verizon on the business side. So I think consumers certainly will benefit from this next industrial revolution because they're the ultimate consumers at the at sort of the end, but it's really businesses that are going to transform as a result of what we're building here. So Verizon's built this stack, or we've, we've really moved further on our journey to do this. Uh, we started with the network layer, started with intelligent networking and integrating our networks uh, and transforming them with SDN. Uh, we combined our wireless and wireless stack to do that, uh, and the software-defined networks were a fundamental place to start that journey uh, because we had to do it in software to move quickly, and you have to move quickly in order to be first and in order to deliver the innovation that's necessary on top. Uh, on top of that network, we build platforms. So those platforms to the prior side are necessary to create the automation and that end-to-end -end service assurance. So we know what's happening in the life cycle of a product or a microservice. And the microservices or products or solutions sit at the top, and they sit there along with the applications. And in order to provide a fully integrated, intelligent network, you have to have all these components working together. And I would argue that we've done that. And SDN and NFE is already proven in, and now the next phase of this journey is to really more fully automate the stack on top uh, with APIs that are connected all the way through to the application layer. Now this slide, this is a build slide, just so you know. Uh, it represents, this is where we start with 4G. So 4G today provides many of the core attributes that we need to affect this digital transformation for customers. It provides reliability, uh, fairly low latency, a certain amount of throughput to support use cases. It connects uh, customers wherever they may be, and it can support significant data volumes. Uh, it also provides you know, some service um, deployment support from an orchestration um, and an automation layer. But when you layer on 5G, 5G takes these capabilities to a whole new level, uh, especially in the areas of low latency, increased throughput, and massive connectivity. And this, back to those industry trends we saw in the first few slides, are really are, what are necessary to support the emerging applications that we need for this fourth industrial revolution. When you take 5G and combine it with the massive fiber necessary to build a 5G network, because if any of you here are network operators, you know it takes a lot of fiber to build a wireless network, a lot of wires to build a wireless network. Um, but you also need massive spectrum and millimeter wave. You also need a software-defined network to provide that agility and those core capabilities. And then finally, you need a multi-access edge computer, MEC, to support the movement of that cloud much closer to the customer. And I think Roy touched upon some of these things with 5G, and you, you will hear all that, and I don't intend to give you a primer 
corner on 5G today, but we really believe 5G is the next generation of solutions that are going to transform and drive that social, economic, you know, all these other changes that we saw in the 1920s that we're going to see happen much more fully in the upcoming 2020s. And Really, this is where uh, these applications operating at the edge and the reason that ecosystem I mentioned in the prior slide are so important, because unless all of these components are together, we can't realize the full potential of these technologies. And we're all here today, not only because we love the technologies, because it, it, we can admit it, we're engineers, we're coders, we're, we're scientists, we're technologists, but we actually care about the applications and what you do with the technologies. And so the use cases are only just starting to be identified and realized. It's an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem built on spectrum. It's an ecosystem built on software-defined networks. And it's an ecosystem um, built with all of these other users and applications that sit um, at the edge so developers now can have new ways to reach customers and solutions. And these building blocks are necessary uh, to really evolve to a service-based architecture. And this service-based architecture is what Verizon built so that we could deliver services to customers in near real time and, and eventually in real time. And this is why the, this whole solution set is transformed transformative in the industry. We had to build an adaptive core. We had to uh, build a, a solution set that gave us operational agility. And all of this was necessary to support all of the functions that have to happen at the edge and ultimately to support network slicing. And you'll hear a lot more about that, I think, in some of the sessions coming up. Uh, and network slicing is really where we begin to customize a customer's policies with a specific slice of the network so that they can use that based on the application demands. And all of this automation will help us do that in real time and make that not only agile networks and dynamic networks, but agile applications and agile solutions. We call the convergence of all these things the real-time enterprise uh, because all these things have to work together to enable the uh, full capabilities of business transformation for customers. Uh, ultimately, we think this will re revolutionize the industry with 5G and uh, this will ultimately create the in what we're calling the intelligent edge fabric to enable real-time business processes. Uh, and this enables us to exploit information so that businesses have true visibility from the time of production to the time of consumption. And that's what's the game changer. That's why it's called the real-time enterprise. Today, most businesses don't have that end-to-end -end visibility or end-to-end -end control. And all of these attributes together are really what help us deliver that. And these are just a few examples of some of the use cases that we think. Uh, but this changes the core economics in a company. It will change how, they, how soon they have path to cash. It'll allow companies to flex and change their production systems in real time. Uh, to change and get closer to customers and users, especially in the retail space, and understand user preferences and act on those preferences in real time. It's a total game changer. But it's not easy to get there, and we know that, and that'll be some of the themes that we talk about in the coming uh, days. Integration is challenging, and while we've come a long way at Verizon to build the intelligent network, uh, we're not finished yet, uh, but it does require significant integration and ecosystem partners to realize the potential and to really support this. It's not just a matter of implementing an SDN network and saying you're done. It requires fundamental shifts to the business models and how we build our companies, how we operate our own companies to actually affect this change. Uh, and it, it's, it's been a challenge and an opportunity um, to work through these issues with the, the, the ecosystem of partners that we have here. And I would argue this is why no one company can do it by themselves, and uh, nor do we really need to. And I think, you know, the ongoing discussions about standards and all of, and things that we'll talk about in some of the panels will, will actually help us further that conversation. 
So in the end, I'm going to wrap up with this slide. I'm moving quickly today because nobody wants the long speaker, right? So um, in the end here, you know, we still have a call to action. And the call to action is, uh, you know, that we have to keep building APIs. We have to keep building the partnership of uh, the ecosystem partnership. We have to build, learn how to build and run adaptive networks and work together to give customers control of those networks. Uh, today, they really don't have that. They may, we may say you have an SDN and you could, uh, or an SD-WAN and you can create your own policy changes within that SD-WAN. Um, but the networks themselves don't always flex to the architecture and to the requirements customers have. But that's coming. 5G will help facilitate that. And as we continue to build out these networks, we really have to understand that this is the next wave of the uh, industrial revolution. And the, the 20s that are coming are the opportunity for us to actually change the game once again and deliver new solutions to every household in the world uh, and every business in the world too. Because the way businesses need to operate and the agility businesses need today are intimately dependent on how we provide communications and other types of networks. Okay. And that's my keynote. Any comments or questions? Thank you.